So this is our last topic for the chapter on techniques of integration. Uh, we're going to look at improper integrals. Okay. Now, this is a bit of a departure from what we've been doing so far. Um, and if we're improper integrals, we aren't always necessarily trying to evaluate an integral. I mean, we'd like to, um, but it's not necessarily always the goal. What we're more interested in for improper integrals is to answer a question of existence. Does an integral actually exist? And the reason is that we are going to try to deal with integrals where we're, we're capturing some sort of asymptotic behavior, right? So what we're going to be looking at is we're going to be looking at problems where maybe we have something like this. So maybe we have a function that goes off like that. And so it approaches 0, right? So here's, here's y equals f of x, right? And we know that the limit as x goes to infinity of f of x is 0. And the question is, well, could we actually calculate a well-defined area if we calculated the area under the curve and we just kept going forever, right? Um, does that actually make sense, right? Because, you know, the, the contribution that we get as we go further and out is getting smaller and smaller and smaller, right? Because the y value is getting really tiny, so there's less and less area. And the question is, as you're adding that, you're, you know, it, it sort of it gets into this sort of, sort of like a, almost like it's not quite the same as a ream in some picture, but it's a related idea of you're, you're adding up, you know, we think about adding those rectangles, right? Um, well, you're adding up, you know, infinitely many rectangles, even, even for a partition of, of finite delta x, right? Because you're going off forever, there's an infinite number of rectangles um, of increasingly small size because the width is staying the same, but the height is getting smaller. And so if you add up infinitely many really tiny numbers that are getting tinier as you keep adding, does that actually add up to something finite? Um, or, or, or does it add up to something infinite, right? That's the question that we care about, right? Do we get a finite answer for area under the curve or something like this, right? And we might similarly be faced with the same question in a situation where we're trying to integrate a function where there's a vertical asymptote, right? So maybe, maybe we have something where we, we approach a vertical asymptote like so, and we're interested in calculating the area. And is if we tried to calculate the area, say, from, from the asymptote to some point, right? Is that finite or is it infinite? Well, we're going to try to develop some techniques that let us answer these questions, right? So f sometimes we can actually find the value. So if we can, we would like to know what is this value, right? But the more, the more basic question that we want to answer is, does that value actually exist? Is it a number? If it is a number, then maybe we can ask what that number is. But first and foremost, we need to figure out what the number is, right? Um, so a basic example that we might look at is the following. Let's say we are doing the integral from, well, Let's say we're going from 0 to some value, let's call it, say, c of 1 over 1 plus x squared. Okay, so that's a function whose graph maybe looks something like this. Right? It's sort of like a bell shape. Um, what do we get for that? Well, the nice thing about this one is we know an antiderivative, right? We know that this is equal to simply arc 10 from 0 to c. Arc 10 of 0 is 0, so this is arc 10 of c. Okay, so we just get a value, arc 10 of c, right? Um, and now we ask, well, what happens to that value as c gets really big? Well, if you remember what the graph of arc 10 looks like, right? The graph of arc 10 happens to have 
a vertical asymptote at pi over 2, right? And arctan does something like this. So we can actually make sense of the limit, right? We can say, hey, you know what? The limit as c goes to infinity of arctan of c, it's actually finite. We get a number. We get pi over 2 because arctan has this horizontal asymptote, right? So we can actually make sense of that. And so we can write down something um, that now sort of makes sense. We could say, hey, then it sort of makes sense to say that the integral from 0 to infinity of 1 over 1 plus x squared is pi over 2, right? So an improper integral is, is going to be one of these two forms. So it might be one where one of the limits of integration, we, or possibly both, we write as infinity, right? And, and you know, we, we don't just plug in infinity. We make sense of this in terms of a limit, right? But in some situations, that limit might exist. We get a value, and we can talk about this. We can, we can assign a number. We say, hey, here's the value of the improper integral. Um, we'll encounter a similar idea um, for vertical asymptotes as well, right? Um, We'll, we'll express the integral in terms of a limit. If that limit exists, then we have an improper integral. Okay? So we're going we're gonna to look at a number of examples that illustrate how this idea works.